Hello and welcome back. In today's video, we're going to be discussing on how I became a cyborg. This little glass tube, which has some copper wire in it, a chip, and a ferrite core, one similar is embedded in my hand, specifically in my left hand, about this region. Those who watch my videos a lot know that I have gloves on normally, but there's a couple cases where you've seen my hands, and the astute viewers may have noticed something. Let's take off my glove and take a closer look at my hand. I have a small scar here. But nothing else is too noticeable until I push my hand up and then a little lump appears. This is in fact the chip. Now let's first discuss what RFID is. RFID is a technology that's been around for a couple decades now. It stands for Radio Frequency Identifier. It's a passive electronic, meaning there's no batteries in it. It works off of induction, where the induction powers it up and then allows the data to be read. So there's a little copper coil in there which is connected up to a chip. It's quite simple actually. But then this one is coated in glass which makes it biocompatible and your body doesn't reject it or an infection doesn't occur. Kits like this are meant for animals but there are a few companies that make ones for specific humans such as dangerous things. The chip that I have in my hand is made from dangerous things. It's an American made country and their packaging is really nice and everything comes pre-sterilized and it's very trustworthy. This one is meant for canines and I was originally going to go with this one but I saw a dangerous things kit and decided to go with them instead as it seemed a little bit safer option instead of going with some random Chinese company. It's easy to mark out the location but the chip will migrate in some cases or it'll try to stay in the same spot. Now how do you go about getting one of these chips put into your hands? Well, you can just order the kit from the Dangerous Things website and get it shipped to your door. You could put it in yourself like I did, but I don't recommend doing that. There's trained piercers throughout the country that can easily do this procedure in a much cleaner environment and a much safer conditions. And they know what they're doing. So what they'll do is first they'll wash your hands and make sure you're sterilized in the beginning. Then they'll mark out where it needs to be injected. It injects right about here, and you just mark out the location. Next, you want to roll the skin, separate the top skin from all the blood vessels, and push in the needle. Now, this is a quite large needle, and I'm going to skip over the process where I actually inject it because people tend to not like giant needles going into their hands. And you take the needle out, put a Band-Aid on, and you're all good to go. It takes a couple months to heal, up to a year before you have complete healing done, but after a month, you're able to do everything that you would be able to do before. Now, because of the location, is it's actually protected. Now, the chip itself is not that fragile, but it is glass, biocompatible glass. Now, because it's right here, it's protected by a bone here and a bone here and soft squishy tissue here. So to break it, you would need an impact directly on it. And even if you have one of those impact, it'll move out of the way. If installed properly, of course. Now, injections like these use a large needle, such as a four to six gauge needle. Now, these needles are quite large. They're nowhere near similar to the ones used for injecting medicine. This one right here is a diabetic needle. And I don't know about you, but there's kind of a difference there. Now, I'm bringing this up due to the fact that some people think that the coronavirus vaccine is going to inject us with microchips. Now, I think I would notice if they were injecting a needle this large and then something the size of a grain of rice underneath my skin. Now, let's say, just for talking's sake, that they were injecting a chip such as this into your hand, which is the smallest functioning chip, as if you get any smaller, you run into the issue of it not working. Now, these chips 
only have data on them. You can't use them for tracking, you can't use them to triangulate the location. And once again, they are passive technology, not active. So you need to be constantly powering it to read the data off of it, which would use large amounts of power. And it's not even remotely feasible. Can you do it with one of these chips? Well, right here I have a drawer underneath my bench that is currently locked. And this is copper coil right here. I personally don't like the design of this one that I bought off of Amazon. I'm going to end up redesigning it and making my own. But here I have the chip which is programmed to the same data that is needed to open this. So when I take the chip and I pass it over the coil, it unlocks. Then once the timer runs out, it relocks. I have the same data that's on this chip onto my hand, so I can just pass my hand over this and open up the drawer. The important thing is these coils aren't really set up as good as they should be. We are limited by the size of it, because if we go any bigger, we can get better signal, but we'll also have a larger chip. So we're only able to get a few centimeters of read data or make the chip bigger, which Dangerous Things has been working on making a bigger chipset affects it is how it goes on. The best way to do it is go perpendicular across it because if you go parallel to it it won't read, up and down it won't read, sideways it won't read, you have to be pretty dead on with it. The important thing that you need to understand about RFID technology is its radio frequency. So it needs to be at a specific frequency to function. This one, the XEM, operates at 125 kilohertz. This is the one that's currently in my hand. But this only works at low frequencies on ones such as the drawer I just showed. But the XNT, which is an NFC one, which operates at 13.56 megahertz, which the NFC is enabled on most smartphones. So hypothetically, if you wanted to, you could put your banking information, your credit card, practically anything onto your hand and then just bring it up to your cell phone to authenticate or transfer data. You can even put a YouTube link to it. Now, should you get one of these or should you not? Well, I got one because I thought it was a pretty cool technology and I wanted to mess around with it. But if you're just a regular old person, you don't really need it. But it's a cool thing to have to where you make the door know that it's you instead of having to authenticate the door with like a key or something. The door already knows that it's you and opens up for you. Thanks for watching and see you next time. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns about the video, please post them in the comment section below as I'll read all of them. And if you want to join a server with like-minded individuals, I operate a Discord server. The link can be found in the description or in the comments section. I don't know, but I've been told uranium ore is worth more than gold. I sold my cad, I bought me a jeep, I got that bug, and I can't sleep. Uranium fever has gone and got me down. Uranium fever is spreading all.